So it looks like a bunch of people have connected. Thank you so much for joining everyone. So my name is Eric. I'm the head of sales for Georgian Group. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, Marla Baker, who's a business development specialist in design industry supporter, Georgian Build. Say hello, Marla. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. It's going to be a great webinar. Absolutely. And uh, also our guest speaker, uh, Salima Mamdami of uh, Fully Booked Designer. So Salima is a marketing executive and business mentor for 20 plus years, uh, founder of the Marketing Boutique, which is a full-time uh, service marketing agency and creator of Fully Booked Designer, which is a mentorship program for design professionals. Say hi to everybody, Salima. Hey, everyone. Well, thank you for joining us today. Exactly. So folks, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I see there's a couple people just jumping in at the moment. I'm going to wait about maybe two more seconds. Yeah, I think that's everybody. So um, folks, thanks for joining us. Um, so the, the reason that, uh, that we're all joining today um, is to discuss, um, you know, how Georgian Build and, and how Salima and her firm, um, the Marketing Boutique, can help the design community. Um, Coming out of COVID, um, obviously looking to restart and, and, and put a bit of a jump start in our businesses, um, and also what the long term plan is for, for this year and moving forward. Uh, Salima is a marketing executive um, and expert on um, how to attract more leads, generate leads, um, but also we'll really do a deep dive um, into your business. There is a worksheet available for download in the chat, which I believe Marla just posted. Um, so we're going to take about an hour today, potentially, with the Q&A um, and chat. Um, and also, we've got some great prizes at the end from, uh, from Sherwin-Williams and from Georgia Build. So get comfortable, uh, get something cold to drink. It's a hot day outside, and we'll get started. So a little bit about Georgian Build. Um, uh, Georgian Build is a, is a uh, member of the Georgian Group of Companies, which consists of Georgian Renovations, uh, Georgian Custom Build, and our commercial division. Um, so we are a, a expert team of tradespeople, project managers, site supervisors, suppliers, and estimators. Um, and the reason that we launched uh, this division and brought Marla on board is we were getting a very, very healthy number of designers reaching out to us and asking for access to the contracting portion of our business because they recognized that our 10-step process is, is quite revolutionary, quite a bit different, and that is that you know, we give our clients the certainty of, you know, doing all of the design up front, the scope of work, um, the finishes, and um, the architectural uh, permits and drawings to get a fixed price and give a lot of certainty to that. So, you know, we definitely recommend that you reach out to Marla if you'd like some more information about the Georgian Build um, part of our business, and then we'd be happy to have a further conversation. So what you get with dealing with Georgia Bills is over 50 years experience um, and the guarantee that your project will be completed on budget as we give a fixed price and on time. Um, so we work smarter, more efficiently. Um, so you, the designer, can spend more time bringing other projects into your business. Um, you're, if you don't want to, you're not having to do the site supervising, the estimating, the managing of the trades, all of those kinds of things and really freeing you up to be more customer focused um, and also bring in more business. So if you've got a finite uh, amount of money or amount of hours invested in a project, you're not gonna worry about going over that and making a project not a money maker for you. So I'd like to, uh, to introduce uh, Salima and, and her portion of the presentation. Um, Salima, I'm just going to stop my share and let you jump on and you can get started. Can you see the presentation okay? Yeah, looks great. Awesome. Uh, always want to make sure that the technology is, is cooperating. Thank you, Eric, for such a warm introduction. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today. It is a hot day, and I will try and keep this short um, so that we can get out there and enjoy this beautiful, glorious day. So what we're going to be talking about is how to create a strategic plan for interior design business owners 
we're now thinking about going, you know, reopening the business and getting back into uh, the into the industry and getting clients. But let's take a quick uh, look at what the state of the industry was BC, not before Christ, but before COVID, right? So the the challenges that I was hearing about through my uh, mentorship program before the pandemic, before the crisis were that referrals were down, competition was going up. Um, there were inconsistency in terms of clients uh, that were coming in and cash flow. Everything was starting to move digitally, um, you know, and people were also looking for quick turnarounds like uh, such as e-design services. What I was also hearing from designers is that clients were shopping rates and were, you know, preferring to buy online and working. Uh, so designers were working very, very hard, but not getting any recognition. And at the end of the day, not making the cash that they wanted to. The world today has basically um, maximized what we were feeling before, has, you know, uh, made it exponentially harder for some people. Not for everyone, for some, you know, it may be business as usual. They were already well situated in handling the business and handling the clients that were coming in and they're well on their way. So if you're one of those people, congratulations, right? It's business as usual for you, Corona or COVID hasn't had much of an impact in your business. For others, Others are probably burying their head in the sand, just like this ostrich in the picture, hoping for this pandemic to be over and then things will miraculously, magically go back to normal, whatever that new normal is and things will just kind of take care of themselves. And yet I also see some designers today who are ready to create a new norm for themselves, ready to create something new. They're ready to what we call burn their boats. Now, are you familiar with this story of burning the boats? Lately, I hear Tony Robbins talks about this a lot. So I'll give you a little bit of a background. So it's story time, people. Back in 1519, Hernando Cortez came from Spain to Mexico, what we see as Mexico today, with a tiny uh, force of about 600 soldiers and they wanted to conquer the new world. When he came and happened upon the new world, he realized that this is a much bigger um, arena, much bigger landmass than what he had envisioned. And he had two choices. He, had, he could either retreat or what he decided to do <clears throat> was to burn the boats. He told his um, army that there is no retreating, there's no going back. It's either um, make it or die in the attempt of making it or I'm conquering it. So basically with that in mind, with that mindset of no going back, uh, this is the new world, this is how we're going to, this is where we're going to either live or die. With that mindset, they were 100% committed. And even with a small, small army of only 600 people, they, the Spaniards managed to conquer the mighty Mayan empire. So this phrase of burning the boat is quite relevant in what a lot of us as business owners are experiencing right now. Do we just pretend that, you know, this, when the pandemic is going to be over, things are going to go back to normal and things will be um, back to the, the great times that we had? Or do we acknowledge that we need to perhaps burn some boats that have not been serving us, let go of some habits that were not uh, doing well for us, and maybe changing some of our mindset so that we can confidently move forward. So with that, that that's been the preamble or the, the, the thinking behind preparing today's presentation. So what does that look like when you decide and declare you're burning your boats? Uh, what does the world forward look like, right? So in your post COVID strategic plan, what we're going to be talking about today is um, doing a strategic analysis, right? That is going to clearly define who you are as a business owner and who you work with and who you stand for. Now this kind of work, requires your attention 
and requires information that only you have as a business owner. I won't be able to give that to you. So I ask for participation and I ask for your attention on that section for sure. Um, then we're going to talk about uh, gold resetting. Now as business owners, and I think sometimes families do this as well, we set our goals, our financial targets at the beginning of the year. Many of us have lost quite a few weeks and months of income by now. Um, and so maybe it's time to reset those goals that, um, that, we, that were set in the beginning of the year so that we can in, end the year strong. Um, so what needs to be tweaked? We're gonna be talking about that. And finally, we're going to be talking about a marketing system, a marketing system that uh, embraces the new way of targeting and attracting your ideal clients so that they get to know, let, know you, like you, love you, trust you before you even book a discovery call with them. Sounds good? So let's move on to the first part which is the strategic analysis. And why that's important is because it's going to help us evaluate your current positioning in the marketplace, right? There, there's a lot of competition, like we said earlier, and there are a lot of designers with this pent up um, need to get into the workforce. So we need to make sure that we understand strategically what makes you different, what makes you unique, and um, what makes you memorable in front of your ideal clients, right? The reality has changed. So let's do a quick reality check. Like Eleanor Roosevelt says, it takes just as much energy to wish as it does to plan. So let's plan, right? Here's some of the questions that you should be asking as a business owner right now when we're talking about planning. The first one is, which marketing channels do we need to explore? Now, these questions are in your worksheet. If you haven't had a chance to download it from uh, Marla earlier, there's also a link in the chat that you can click and you can follow along or grab a pen and paper and you can jot these questions down. And just a reminder, I think we are recording, not I think we are recording this. So a replay will be available shortly and we'll share where you can get the replay as well. So the questions you need to be asking is, is what marketing channels you need to explore, where your clients are most likely to be hanging out. The second is, which services do you need to add, maybe perhaps remove or improve services that haven't served you well, right? Um, and also we need to look at ways to increase cash flow and margins, not just cash flow for the sake of cash flow, but really it's about profitability in order to succeed, right? And we're going to be also thinking about how can you improve your sales process and perhaps your client onboarding process so that you're able to deliver your service with ease and flow and confidence and are able to focus on the design side of things, which is why we get into business in the first place, right? And finally, what tools, trainings, and resources will give us a strategic advantage in today's world, right? So in order for you to answer those questions, what we often do is what we call a SWOT analysis not SWOT, but SWOT, S-W-O-T. The first letter stands for your strengths, right? So what you need to be asking is, what are you good at? Um, what differentiates you from competition? What assets, technology, resources do you have right now in your business that give you a leg up, right? Uh, a competitive advantage over others. And also, what size of community do you have? And what I mean by that is, uh, how many followers do you have on social media? And on which platform? How many people are on your email list? These things are, believe it or not, a competitive advantage um, that can be uh, nurtured and utilized to help you um, book some new clients. And finally, what systems, expertise, affiliations, and partnerships can you count on today um, and give you that support and the strength you need to re-enter uh, the market. 
So those are some key questions that, like I said, only you will have the answers to, but, you know, write these down as questions or just the answers in your worksheet to help you uh, move along with, with this presentation. The next part is your weaknesses. So what are some of the things that um, your company lacks that you wish you had? Um, not necessarily just wish because they're nice to have, but you see it's something that's an objection that comes up over and over again whenever you're doing a sales uh, conversation or when you're trying to close um, a client, this is one thing that you wish you had. Um, what do other competitors have uh, over you? Is it their positioning? Is it uh, their team? Is it uh, the way they're marketing themselves? Is it a system or is it a, the way they're pricing um, their, their services that makes it really easy to understand and easy to engage with them? Other weaknesses could be what are your own personal limitations? You know, maybe it's hours, maybe it's personal limitations that prevent you from offering the same type of services that others are offering. So you want to be mindful of these for sure. Um, and what is the most recurring sales objection? I, I alluded to that earlier, but it's definitely one way to get introspective and think about what are some things that you're hearing time and time again um, that you're kind of, you know, butting up against and you want to be mindful of that as a, a weakness um, in your business strategy right now. Opportunities. So where are some things that, you know, where you're leaving money on the table? Do you need to revise your pricing? Are there any service packages that require a makeover at this point um, in not only how you're marketing your services, but also how you're delivering your services? Uh, what markets or partners or affiliates are currently underserved? So think back to the types of clients that you've worked with in the past. Think back to um, some of the trades as well as retail partners that uh, you have established relationships with. Perhaps you've sent a lot of clients um, in one direction and you haven't uh, or they haven't reciprocated. So there's an opportunity for you to perhaps explore. And threats. So what are the changes in market in supplier relations? Or maybe there's some, <clears throat> excuse me, there may be some competition that may be coming up in your market that you want to uh, highlight or at least be more cognizant of at this point. Um, could be e-design services, could be everyone shopping online, could be, um, many other threats that um, were kind of in the back of your mind, you, you may just want to jot that down right now. Um, sorry, so I skipped ahead. You also want to think about embracing any sa new sales or marketing strategies in your business. Do you have any excessive staff or trades or maybe suppliers that are constantly turning over? Um, or maybe there are some suppliers who are not extending the same kind of terms that others are. And so you may want to be mindful of that as well as a threat in your business. And finally, this is one thing that uh, business owners often neglect is your own skill set, health and well being, right? We are our businesses. So if your um, skill set is outdated, or if your health is not at its prime, or your well-being is in question, then certainly that's something that needs to be identified and, and better understood. So this makes up your SWOT analysis, your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your threats. And this will give you an appreciation of where your business is standing right now. And it should hopefully highlight some opportunities for you to explore and move forward with, and it will definitely help you answer those six questions that I shared in the earlier slide. Make sense? So let's move on to the next part of this uh, COVID, post-COVID strategic plan, which is goal resetting, right? Maybe time for many of us, not just some of us, many of us to adjust our goals for uh, cash flow as well as clients. And we're gonna talk about both of those things. Because here's a quote from uh, 
an author, Mike Michalowicz, um, who wrote this very famous book called Profit First. I'm not sure if any of you are a follower of the Profit First uh, philosophy, but his um, his thought is that businesses usually fail because they run out of cash, not because it's a bad business. And I truly believe, um, having been running a business now for 14 years, is that cash and clients are the lifeblood of your business. But most often when I meet designers who not just starting out in their business, but who have been running a, a business for a number of years. Most often when I ask them about their, um, their cash goals, their income goals, um, they have a hard time coming up with these goals. And for the most part, we start out by setting our annual target the same as our employment income. So this is something that I hear time and time again that I, you know, I'd like to make $100,000 this year. And if I say why, they'd say, well, that's what I was earning in my, in my previous role. Or that's a nice round number. But there's a lot that as a business owner, we need to understand where that cash goes, right? So if you're making $100,000, there's going to be some expenses and overhead. Maybe you have a showroom, maybe you have contractors or maybe you have a, uh, an intern, maybe you have an insurance that you have. Uh, these are your fixed income, uh, sorry, fixed expenses that you need to take into account. That's going to, you know, be, that's not, that's going to come out of that $100,000. Then as Canadian business owners, we're all very well aware of taxes. In fact, I've worked with designers who have goals set for just the months of April and May so that they can catch up and they can and pay taxes. So that is a big portion of, of our income uh, expense that we're going to be paying out. And then, is, uh, then comes your owner's pay, what you take home, and finally profit. Mike in his book talks about uh, putting aside profit first, that's the title of his book, but I wanted you to at least be aware of the four key areas that your money is going to be going. So maybe when you're saying that I, my income goal should be $100,000 because that's what I was earning as an employee, you didn't have those expenses to pay um, and you didn't have the corporate and the personal uh, tax. So those are things that you definitely want to be aware of. Another thing that is also something that I find designers uh, make a mistake of commonly is pricing their services. Time and time again, I hear uh, designers charging an hourly rate. And the hourly rate is a very difficult way for not only um, us to establish the value of the service that we're providing, but also really difficult for our clients to gauge how much this project is going to cost them. So what we like to propose is value-based pricing. And so just a quick sidebar in this COVID era, during this crisis, as you know, we have been, many, of, uh, many business owners have been without clients for a, a few weeks, months, it's very tempting for us to slash our rates even further, right? So instead of discounting your rates, what I would like to propose is keeping your rates the same, but maybe adding more value to the service that you're providing, right? Um, another way is, again, keeping the rates the same, but creating smaller packages so you can meet where your clients are right now. It might be very difficult for someone to swallow a bill of $20,000 for a full service package. But if you were to kind of meet them where they are and create smaller milestones, a payment plan for them that they could absorb and they could pay you, you render the service and then you go to the next phase and they pay you and you render the service, that is perhaps more doable than for them to justify or feel comfortable paying $20,000 right now. And a third way is to reduce your rates 
but also lessen the value. So that means maybe creating an entry uh, package, an, an entry level package. So if your services are on average $20,000, maybe you could create an entry level service for $10,000. Um, but then you're not giving them all the services of the $20,000 package. So just wanted to kind of give you some options. If any, if you're thinking about perhaps discounting your services, I'd like to emphasize the idea of value-based pricing, uh, hopefully a fixed flat fee rather than an hourly rate, okay? So going back to goals resetting, this is also in your worksheet and you can fill this out, uh, along with me as we're talking about it. So if you had a goal at the beginning of the year, maybe the number was $100,000, um, you're going to want to um, mention that right now. It, that's your annual income goal. Hopefully that's based out of um, looking at what your expenses are, what your taxes are, and so on and so forth. That's your annual income goal. Um, does it need to be adjusted? in any way right now. If you have been undercharging, chances are you, you want to adjust it because we're, we're starting fresh. So go ahead and jot down what your annual income goal is at this point, right? The next thing is you're going to want to then divide it by 12 to get your monthly sales target. Now keep in mind, Again, we've lost a few months of income for most of us. So moving forward, are you playing catch up? And so does your monthly target need to be readjusted for that? And if that's the case, then go ahead and, and divide it by perhaps 10 and see what that number comes up to. So if your annual goal is $100,000, it should be 8,333 for your monthly target. And then you wanna increase it by 10, so it'll come out to $10,000 a month. Everybody with me so far? Let me know. Um, then the next number that I want you to jot down is what is the average design fee for your services? Again, this is going back to the idea that you should have a flat fee or a value-based pricing system. Uh, where you are giving a whole number and not an hourly rate. But if you haven't done that exercise yet, you may want to go back to some of the work that you've done in the past with other clients and, and average out what is the average um, invoice that, that the client ended up paying for your services. Okay, And then let's figure out how many new clients does that represent. So let me explain this part in a, uh, in a bit. If your annual income goal was $100,000 that's now been adjusted to, you know, that you're gonna be catching up some income and it's going to be, you need to make $10,000 each month and your design service fees are $5,000 per package. So you need two new clients each and every month. It's a very simplified math, but that's hopefully to illustrate this example. Everyone with me so far? Okay, good. So we're gonna move along and now go into the next set of calculation that we need to do. We've talked about how much cash we need to bring in and how many clients we need to sign each and every month using this example of $100,000 that calculates to two new clients each month. Let me explain to you how do we actually get to those two clients. Remember what Eleanor Roosevelt said, it takes just as much energy to wish as it does to plan. So we're actually gonna plan that with you today. So what, we, you know, what we're gonna be talking about now is how many leads do you need to sign or how many leads do you need coming in each and every month so that you can get that, that target of two clients? So let's say you've got your leads that are either coming in, they're calling you or they're coming into your website or they're filling out a form 
or they're reaching you through Instagram or any other social media network, those are considered leads. They have reached out to you, right? And you can also follow up with them with some kind of a marketing uh, information. Through this back and forth, through this conversation, you're going to be inviting these people to book a discovery call with you to see if you, you are the right designer for them and to see if they're the right client for you. And then in that design um, discovery call, you're going to be selling them your design consults, your design consultation, which hopefully are paid uh, design consultation that you're gonna be making. And through that consultation, then you're going to be presenting your full service package and voila, you're going to have new clients. So you start out really you know, with a big base of leads and then it dwindles down and in the world of sales and marketing, there's this thing called the rule of thirds, one thirds. So if you start out with 100 leads, your chances are you're going to have maybe 30 um, discovery calls, one third of those. And then from one third of those discovery calls, you'll realize that these are the right clients or they say that you're the right designer and you will proceed to booking a design consultation. So from 100, now you're down to 10 design consultations. And then from those consultations, hopefully you'll be able to secure three, the rule of thirds, into full service new clients. So you see how quickly that number shrinks, right? So now let's look at that math. If we were to quickly look at your numbers, and if you had said in the earlier worksheet that you need to bring in um, two clients each month. That means let's figure out how many consults, how many discovery calls, and how many leads you need to have in place in order for you to book those two clients. See, all, a lot of us, a lot of business owners who don't have this experience and who don't have this knowledge focus on just getting those two clients but we have to start by thinking about the leads first and then the leads that book the discovery calls um, or the right fit call. And then from there you sell a design consultation and then from a consultation, your goal is to sign them into a full service design client. Let me know if this was a light bulb moment for many of you or any of you, because it was certainly for me when I started um, my business. And this is something that we go through inside our program called the Fully Booked Designer. So let's do a quick recap because we've talked about a lot of numbers, a lot of scenarios. The first thing that I want you to be mindful of and be very clear on as you move forward past this COVID era and is what is your monthly, what are your monthly expenses and what is your monthly sales target, right? Not just a number, that's wishful but backed by data. And so then you're going to know, need to know how many clients can you onboard each and every month uh, successfully without dropping any balls, without um, getting stressed out. And then you need to figure out how many consultations do you need to be um, booking with each and every month. And finally, what activities, i.e. marketing activities, you need to be doing to book those consoles um, so that you can sign more clients, right? So that makes a perfect segue into our third part of this presentation that we promised, which is a marketing system, right? So it's time, if you haven't done so yet in your business, to perhaps consider automating your lead generation process. Because what we just said is we need a, a lot more leads than what we probably previously thought so that we can whittle down and consistently and predictably bring in the two clients each and every month or three clients or whatever that number holds for you, right? So maybe you've tried some marketing efforts, maybe you've posted on social media, maybe you've got a website, but you're not getting the results um, that you had hoped for or that you would like to see on paper. 
And so it is time to perhaps adjust that and adjust the way we are approaching our marketing and sales processes um, and look for a better solution, right? So at the end of the day, sales and marketing is a numbers game. I just showed it to you. And this is something that I ask each and every client who comes into my program, where's their business at right now? Where do they think they're struggling? And what I hear for the most part is if I can get the client in front of me or if I can get them on the phone, I'm very good with closing those, those deals. I just need to get more, more leads. I just need to get the phone ringing again. And if that's the case for you, I can completely relate to that because this is what I hear. There are the three challenges that, that are preventing you from hitting your sales target right now are that you probably don't have enough leads coming in through the door. Um, second challenge could be that the quality of the leads that you're getting are not what you'd like. So they're not the right fit for you or your services. Maybe you're a kitchen and bath designer and the types of clients that you get uh, knocking on the door or ringing the phone with are more on e-design side or maybe they're looking for a decor package and so they're not the right quality of leads or maybe they're looking for a kitchen design for like five thousand dollars and that's just not the reality for most of us or perhaps um, you need to improve your sales conversion ratio which like I said isn't the 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 problem that I see or I hear about from most designers, most designers are experiencing the problem with that they don't just simply don't have enough leads or that they simply don't have enough quality leads. So that's why I wanted to walk you through this process that every designer who goes through my program gets introduced to, which is our leads to sales system. So the first step is to really find out who your clients are, who your ideal clients are and where you can find them because you need to be marketing where your clients are right like you got to fish where the fish are you got to market where your clients are so what does that mean right so many designers are trying to build their business by trying to let's say reach out and contacting realtors because they probably read it or they heard somebody else who's doing that as a strategy and it's working really well for them. And so you decide that I want to do the same thing. I'm going to start sending packages to realtors. But what if you've decided also that your ideal clients are 50 year olds or 50 plus, they live in a nice neighborhood and they're, that your ideal clients are the ones who want to stay in their home and call it their forever home. They want to update their home. So they're not buying or selling new homes. Then chasing after realtors and marketing to them is not going to give you um, the results that you're looking for. Most of the people inside my fully booked designer program have no, are pretty confident now in finding their ideal clients through social media. But I don't want you to feel restricted or this program is or this presentation today is all about social media. I want you to keep in mind there are many, many different ways of um, identifying where your clients are and finding where your clients are. So for the most part, you probably already have a website. You probably already are on Facebook. You probably have an email system and you are also on Instagram. I kind of know you. Um, Maybe you have uh, also added networking um, through BNI, et cetera, or maybe you're getting leads from House, maybe you're getting leads from LinkedIn or from uh, advertising in magazines or directories, especially if you're finding clients in the commercial side. Um, maybe you've tried some postcard marketing or you've paid somebody to help you with your SEO so that your blogs and your content on your website gets a, a stronger reach. Perhaps realtors, builders, and finally partners. So there's no shortage of where your leads are in my opinion and in also what we have witnessed inside our program. The challenge might be that you may be targeting or your marketing efforts in a space where your clients are not. 
So the first thing to automate the system, to automate your marketing is really understand who your ideal, ideal clients are and where they are hanging out. And then the next step would be to find those clients and then bringing them to what we call a landing page. A landing page can be a hidden page inside a website. So it doesn't have all the tabs at the top and it doesn't have a lot of the buttons and, and distractions. It is a focused page where you are going to be giving them something of value in exchange for their email. And in our world, we like to call that a lead magnet. You may have heard the term lead magnet or a downloadable or an opt-in. The point is that they, you want that conversation away from a noisy social media platform or you know, an external source. And you wanna bring them confidently to this landing page where you're going to be giving them this, um, this valuable piece of content where your potential clients, your leads can learn more about you and they get to know you, they get to like you, they get to trust you. And you're also qualifying these leads because if your signature service is about uh, kitchen, improve, uh, kitchen and bath renovations and your uh, presentation, whether it's a PDF or whether it's a video, it's all about kitchen and bath, then the only person that's gonna be downloading that is either someone who is looking for a kitchen and bath designer or your competitors, <laughs> I hate to say it. But that's basically the, the first three steps of this process. Now I wanna share some examples of the type of packages or online presentations that our clients have put together for their ideal clients. So one of them is um, a realtor, a stager, and a designer based out of New York. And her guide was all about whether uh, clients, her clients want to move or improve their space. Another guide is five ways to control costs during a remodel. So obviously this is a designer who focuses on full service design um, and wants to attract clients of that. And then we've got clients who are more on the, the reno and decor side of things. And so they've created presentations to cater to that market. Does this make sense so far? So now we've talked about stage one, which is meeting your clients. Stage two, bring them to a landing page, which is free of distraction. Stage three, give them something of value that's in line with your signature service. And now you have um, exchanged their email, so you have permission to market to them. You're going to be following up with some email sequences and inviting them to book a discovery call. So hopefully a third of those leads that came to your website will book that discovery call with you where you'll be able to sell them on your design consult and get a paying client out of this. That's our five step process that, um, you know, it's a very light sales funnel or an appointment generator funnel, if you wanna call it that but we like to call it your leads to sales system because keeping in mind that rule of thirds, right? You want to have an automated system that is running 24 seven in the back end, where your leads are coming into your website onto this landing page. They're downloading your presentation. You have collected their information and now you are marketing to them on a one-on-one -on -one basis and inviting them to book a call with you. So just doing a quick recap, what we promised today was to share with you uh, the three key areas that you need to be thinking about as you're re-entering the market um, in this COVID, um, during, the, as this during the pandemic. The first thing we talked about is doing a strategic analysis of your current positioning. Where does your business stand right now? Looking at the SWOT analysis. Second thing that we talked about was resetting your goals because if, even if you set goals in the beginning of the year, they need to be refreshed now and looked at it from this lens of the rule of thirds that I gave you so that you now know what your monthly sales targets are, but also now you know how many leads you need to be bringing in so that you can convert them into discovery calls, into consultations and into paying clients. And then finally, walked you through the five-step system, uh, the marketing system, 
so that you're constantly getting the leads and you are targeting your clients where they are. The thing that I want you to keep in mind when I gave you that state of the industry today, this is something that what we're going through right now inside of COVID, um, a lot of designers and a lot of business owners in general are, you know, have an opportunity to really reestablish and recreate a business in a way that brings them the joy and brings them the, the income that they deserve. And we've had, you know, many opportunities and many of our clients were experiencing the exact same thing that we are feeling like we're forced to feel right now during COVID. But even before COVID, we had numerous clients who went through our fully booked designer program who were experiencing very similar things that we are right now inside of COVID, where all of a sudden their business came to a halt, their pipeline ran dry, the phone wasn't ringing, and they weren't getting the, the, the clients and the cash flow to, to sustain a healthy business. And they've implemented exactly what I've just shared with you, regardless of the fact that we didn't have COVID a year or two years ago. And so there's some, uh, some uh, designers that you might even recognize because they are from Ontario. Um, we've got Francis who went from charging $75 an hour and saying yes to any single, you know, anyone who came her way to quickly um, creating a, a really thriving, profitable, successful business of her own. Adelaide, who's from New York, like I said, she was the one who is a designer, um, a realtor, and a home stager, but she had no plan of how to attract her ideal clients, and she felt stuck, and she needed someone to help her with the strategic plan and with the implementation and with a marketing system so that she can now bring in, she brings in about six consultations a week and uh, sorry, six uh, consultations a week, and she turns them into two full service projects each and every month. So she's systemized her marketing process. And finally, Barb Nicka, uh, also an Ontarian, who had been in business for many, many years, and all of a sudden was faced with this similar situation of no leads coming in. And went through the exact same process and was, made, was able to turn her business around. So I hope that this presentation today, this workshop gave you not only some clarity, but also some solutions of how to confidently re-enter and how to confidently create that profitable, thriving business, even during this COVID era. And just as a recap, wanted to let you know that we will be hosting this presentation on our website, uh, fullybookdesigner.com slash Georgian. Give us a few hours when we can get the recording ready. So you'll be able to go there and you'll be able to download or view this presentation again and take notes. And there's also the link there for the worksheets. So over to you, Marla and Eric for our questions. Great, thank you so much, Salima. Um, so everybody, uh, obviously, that's a tremendous amount of information that uh, that Salima has just shared um, from analyzing your business. And you know, this is definitely relative to COVID. But even you know, anytime you do an analy uh, analysis of your business, it's a good thing. You'd be surprised at some of the results that you might find. And, and Salima touched a bit on that during her discussion. Um, as she mentioned, we will definitely have the recording uh, available for you. Um, also. Um, we're going to open the, the chat up now to, uh, to start with any questions. Um, you can see here on the screen that um, all of our contact information is listed. Um, we do have another webinar that we're going to do, um, and that is uh, Residential Building Permit Fundamentals. Um, it is a CEU course as well. And uh, Marla, if you maybe just touch on that briefly for everybody. Sure. So the difference with this one is it will be um, an IDCEC learning hour. And our lovely Michelle Mavi from the Georgian renovation side of our business will be presenting that as she is BCIN. And it's going to talk about residential building permits and it's going to dispel myths. And Michelle's amazing, so it's just going to be a very good uh, webinar. It's going to be presented in conjunction with IBC, which we're really happy about. 
and that'll be on June 9th so at 2 p.m. as well. So please feel free to reach out to me for more information and to sign up with that. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Salima, for everything. Um, a lot of great content there, as I said. Really appreciate it. And uh, Marla, do we have some, some questions? Up? And we've got oh, some hey, giveaways, too. Hey, hey, we have prizes. So, That's right. That's right. Yeah, because um, yeah, we really appreciate your time and um, staying with us um, for the whole presentation. So, Eric, if you want to advance that slide. Sure. Um, so Sherwin Williams, uh, one of our partners, they partner with us on the Georgian build side of the business and also with Georgian renovation. Everyone who has attended today, uh, Sherwin is going to be sending you a set, a free set of their new um, five brand new color palettes. So they're, they're absolutely beautiful and the paint is amazing and we're really happy to have them as partners. So you'll be getting that. And... <laughs> Since we're all at home now, cooking 24 seven, we've got some beautiful cast iron stove, stove cookware from France. And uh, each of them is worth about, like you would know from styling in your kitchen, in the kitchens, about $300. So I'm gonna go ahead now and draw uh, everybody's names in here. Let's see. We're gonna draw for the tomato hot. <laughs> okay, and it's Jane Campbell. Oh wow! Yay, Jane! Yes. You bought the tomato cocotte, and the other one is a four-liter, uh, just regular Dutch oven. So let's take a look at that. I have that one. <laughs> They're great. So okay. good. Oh, and we have Eve Weinberg, who's won that. Awesome. They us. Perfect. That's great. I'm so glad you guys could join us. Congratulations. So, um, folks, uh, please type your, your questions in the chat. I'm not sure, Marla, if you've got a couple oh. backed up. I'm sure. Uh, got a couple here, so let me just get that. Salim has definitely provoked a lot of questions, that's for sure. Okay. So, Eve Weinberg <laughs> um, had asked, uh, Salima, when you were talking about social media, um, Eve was asking, what if your ideal clients use zero social media? That's why I gave you such a long list of, you know, uh, all the other areas that you could be targeting. Um, the thing about social media, I have a love-hate relationship with it. You kind of need to have a bit of presence on social media. I don't find a lot of prospects will be going into your social media posting and start engaging with you or start like booking a time with you on social media but certainly they will be going there to check you out. And they want to make sure that, um, that you are an active uh, designer, you're currently working, that your website, you know, may, maybe your website was designed a couple of years ago. And they, it's very easy now for people to click on that and search you on social media. And if they don't find, and the other thing they're also checking is that the type of post that you're ma making on social media is in line with the type of work that they're seeking. So they are going to be vetting you on that. Um, even though we feel that they're not on social media. So one of the things that we do inside the program right off the bat, right after we talk about how to update your website is updating all of your profiles on social media, on your Instagram, on your Facebook, and even on LinkedIn, so that it is the most current picture, it has the description of your signature service, and it talks a little bit about the type of clients that you like to work with as well as the projects. Um, it is uh, almost a necessity now. Okay, so we have another question from Mary. Uh, Mary asks, have any designers been able to book any work in the last two months? We have had um, several designers who um, have reported a lot of work. And I'm not just saying that we've got, I generally show screenshots. For some reason, I didn't show screenshots here today. But we've had uh, several designers Keep in mind, they've also been actively marketing and sowing the seeds. And so now they're reaping the rewards. 
the way they're delivering their service, the timeline it's going to take for them to deliver that service is changing. But I think also from, um, from Georgian's perspective, um, you can also um, share your examples of, of the leads that you've been getting from the renovation side as well. So I think they're, they, not I think, I know that on our, in our uh, community, clients are reporting that they have been getting leads, they've been booking clients, they've been signing contracts. Yeah, d definitely. I mean, obviously when, um, <clears throat> When COVID hit and, and you know we cleared out our office and, and you know we're now working from home exclusively, um, we didn't nobody knew how it was going to affect our business um, or, or you know be it the design the construction any of it. Um, so you know we were obviously quite nervous about that. Um, so you know we pivoted a bit and and you know started to figure out okay you know what our, our potential clients are are being pushed into their home right now. Um, they're spending more time there. Um, you know, there's a good potential that they don't necessarily like what they see uh, when they're in their home. Um, so we decided to engage through through this format, which is webinar. And we've been advertising um, on our social media platforms. And you know, Georgian has a a, a good social media platform. Um, I wouldn't say that it's a, a tremendous one, um, but you know, we started you know driving some leads um, you know through engagement on a webinar. And we've been hosting webinars now, uh, what, Marla, probably six weeks? Yeah, we have, absolutely. So uh, probably six weeks, we're doing, we're doing two a week. Um, and you know, we're, we're securing um, consultations, we're securing design business, we've got some commitments to construction from those. And you know, these are people that didn't necessarily know um, Georgian before, but you know, had a need to renovate, um, you know, don't like the look of their kitchen or their main floor or, or any of those kinds of things. And quite frankly, they're a bit of a captive audience because they're sitting at home right now. So um, we've reached out to them, um, you know, we invested, but you know, reading a lot of uh, information out there, um, you know, I know there's an article posted on LinkedIn from Bloomberg talking about, you know, companies that continue to market during this pandemic will be set up to succeed and overachieve coming out of this. Um, you know, when that is fully out of it. So, um, you know, we took that to heart and oh, great article. <clears throat> yeah, we certainly dialed back our, our typical spend. Um, but you know, it's been, it's been successful and we were, we're quite happy with uh, how things have transitioned. And you know what it is people really like the consumers really want to change their environments from what they look like now. Like everyone's going to have a COVID hangover, so to speak, and yeah. they just want to do whatever they can to change their environment. So I have another question. If that, uh, like, if we're finished with that one, we could move on to Vera. Mm -hmm. um, she's saying, on average, how much is the design fee for a kitchen design and for a master bathroom? Mm -hmm. well, maybe we can even contact Vera directly on on that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit more. A little I bit want more. Want to make sure I, I get to everybody. So I'm just going to scroll down because it says mm -hmm. I have four new questions. Let's see. I think while you're going through the question, I noticed somebody had asked for the name of the book. That's right. Yes. It's Thank called you. Profit First. Um, profit as in P-R-O-F-I-T, not profit. Uh, profit First, Mike Michalowicz. Okay, and Salima, I see that we need to draw for the business strategy session. So do you want to talk a little bit about uh, what we're giving away and then I'll just prepare the names again? Yes, Thank absolutely. You. So um, two lucky winners are um, going to have an opportunity to have a business strategy session with myself and Eric. And we're going to dive in even deeper than what we did today. Um, to talk about your current positioning and what marketing and sales opportunities, um, I guess, coming up with your strategic roadmap. Yep. Well, and, and further to what Salima said, you know, we recognize that, and I'm sure everybody does on, on, the, on the webinar, you know, once we are back to, as Salima said, the new normal, um, we would love it for it to be a, a, an avalanche of, of new revenue coming in, but you know, we recognize that that's not going to happen most likely. If it does, good luck to you and, and congratulations, but um, it's probably not going to happen. So 
you know, those that are planned appropriately, those that have, you know, done the necessary steps to analyze their business, as Salima showed us, um, and, you know, work with partners that can get their projects kickstarted quickly, um, are going to be the ones, you know, that succeed in that first three, six, 12 months coming out of, uh, out of this pandemic. So I think that's very, very important. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so let's see. So we're going to do two. Okay. The first one. The first one is Wendy McGeary. Wendy. That's. <laughs> And we have Aaron Reed. Congratulations, Aaron. Well, congratulations. Congrats. Okay. Can't wait to dive in. Yeah, and while you're doing that, Marla, there's a couple more questions that come in um, that I can certainly uh, put out. Uh, somebody's asking, I think it's Mary's asking, can Jordan do building permits for designers? Uh, yes, um, definitely. We. We have a, uh, a BCIN accreditation. We can do permits for you, um, you know, or if there's any other parts of your design business that um, you need, you know, a little bit of augmentation. If you've had to <clears throat> streamline your staff a little bit and those kinds of things, there's certainly lots of different ways that we can support your business. So please reach out to, uh, to Marla and, and let's have a conversation about that. You all know how to reach me. I've been kind of in your face for the last few days. Sorry about that. Oh, yep. Yep. this is so nice of you. You, you wrote here um, that this is such a great format for information and learning, actually benefit of COVID, go figure, that you've learned more in the last two months from webinars than you did all of last year. Wow. Thank you yep. so much. That's so nice to hear. And um, we'll be continuing with content. Absolutely. And uh, Penny's asking uh, if Georgia does custom builds in the Durham region. Absolutely, Penny. Um, I'm sure Marla has your contact information. Can certainly discuss that with you um, later today, or or at a time that uh, works for you for sure. Happy to talk about that. I think that might be all of the questions. Um, do you have anything else, Marla, that you can see question wise? Just a lot of thank yous, and oh, thank mm -hmm. you to Sherwin Williams again. Yeah, um, that yep. was great, and thank you to. Thanks. Thank you to everyone who attended and gave us their time for the first webinar. Uh, please join us for the yep. building permits webinar, and then we will be doing a third one with Massimo, Chef Capra. Um, yep. That will be uh, cooking and talking about the kitchen and just more of a fun, um, informative uh, time with maybe a glass of wine. Yep. So uh, hey. I'll, be, I'll be in touch. <laughs> And the other thing is, um, folks, all of, all of you designers out there, um, you know, we're doing this for you. We want to support you. Um, if there's a topic that you think you'd like to talk about on a webinar, you know, send it to Marla and we're happy to, uh, to look at it because there may be some common questions out there or a common topic that, uh, that maybe we haven't thought about. So, you know, we want this to be interactive. We want your feedback and your input. So please do that as well. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. Thank you. Great day, everybody. Everybody Thank you. Us. Thank you, Salima. Great questions, too. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.